Come on down, gather together. Today, I want to tell you a little story about two guys who were walking down the road. And it was the day after Jesus had risen from the dead, but they were a little confused about what was going on. And so this guy that comes and starts walking with them is Jesus. But it's sort of like he had a mask on. It says, because they couldn't recognize who he was. And so they were talking to him, and he was talking with them, but they didn't even know it was Jesus. So, as he talked with them, their hearts warmed up because of what he was saying, and they were so excited about what God had done. So today, I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to pretend that your mom and your dad, your brothers and sisters, your friend, have a mask on. And I want you to treat them like they were Jesus. What would you say to Jesus? What would you do for them? And just have some fun with it and just think for a minute as you look at them like, hmm, if they were Jesus, what would I say to them? And just have fun with that today. And the other thing I want you to remember is this. That just like those disciples, 
were walk with Jesus but didn't know he was with them and, and they didn't even know where he was, guess what? He was there with them. And some days when you feel like Jesus might be far away and, and you can't find him, you know what? He's right there with you all the time because he promised, he said it, I am with you always. All right. Dear Jesus, we give you thanks for being with us. We give you thanks for walking with us and talking with us. And Jesus, we just ask that you would bless us this day and bless our friends and our family. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Greetings to everyone, to you all, both from near and from far, as we gather together for worship. Last week, we took a little walk with two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and we sort of met with them in their place of confusion when they didn't really know what was going on. It's sort of fitting in the day that we are in with everything going on and all the confusion that takes place. Today, we want to go a little further with them. We want to walk with them and we want to go from the place where they are slow of heart to believe to having hearts on fire. From Luke 24, we share these verses. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Your Father in heaven, we come before you this day, in a day when there's a lot of confusing things going on. Lord, as we come and we walk with you and we join in that walk, Jesus, that you had with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, Lord, we pray that your spirit would speak to our hearts, that you would show us your ways, and that you would bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, a while ago, Pam and I were doing some hiking. I think it was last fall. It sort of sticks out in my mind. And we've hiked in different parks around Pittsburgh. And one of the parks we went to was Frick Park. And Frick Park's a little different. Some of the parks are more spread out and the trails are spread all over the place. But Frick Park, because it's it's a little bit smaller, they got all these trails that are crossing from here to there. And, you know, we started out, looked at the map, got my little Frick Park map here, and, and we knew where we were going, we knew where we started, and we said, here's the route we're going to go. And, but as we're walking and, and crossing this trail and that way, trail, and there's a lot of turns here and there, it got to the place where we came and, and we're like, well, we know where we want to go and we know where we came from, but we don't really know where we are. Uh, where is he, where is here? And my paper map just wasn't helping us. So, of course, Pam gets out her all trails map on her phone. And sure enough, as the map pops up, there's a little dot that says, shows us right where we're at. And then we know where to go from here. Well, that's really how it was with those disciples. They, they knew where they had come from, they knew what they had experienced, and they knew what they were hoping for the future. But with Jesus being crucified on the cross, and in the open tomb and stories that were, were happening, they were confused as to where here was. And that's really when Jesus shows up, he's there to help them figure out you know, he's going to help them figure out where they're going. But to start with, he, he helps them figure out where they're at. And and I think he does it in a neat way. It, it's sort of fun that Jesus shows up. And isn't that always the fun part of the story? As he shows up, um, it says, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And in this day we're in with everybody wearing masks, it, it's sort of fitting to think about that. I was at the uh, labs the other day and um, place where I go to often and one of the workers comes out sees Tim written down and calls for Tim and starts asking me questions and I know she knows the answer to them but she didn't recognize who I was until I started talking and telling the story and then she looked and she says oh you're my Tim 
I don't know if she recognized my name or knew my name or remembered it, but she knew me, and all of a sudden it, it, it came to light. Well, that's the same way it was for Jesus and these disciples. It would take some time in their walk, and as they started to hear the story, then their eyes would get opened. And you know, I sort of wondered why it was that that Jesus hid his identity. You know, I, I think back to when I was a little kid, and it seemed like all the the superheroes, the the good guys, uh, would wear masks. When I was a little kid, there was a guy called the Lone Ranger, and he always had his his mask on. And we had Superman and and Spider Man and our superheroes and for some reason I wonder if they just look at Jesus and know Jesus is the ultimate superhero and that's why our, a lot of our superheroes wear masks today but but Jesus he, he did he had a mask on he he didn't let them see who he was but I think it's because he wanted to slow them down a little bit so that so that they could have a chance first of all to tell their story I mean, it would have been one thing if Jesus showed up and they would have looked and it's like, "Whoa, well, you're dead. And now they recognize him. He's risen. And it would have been like this just boom. And sometimes God does that with people. We know some of the stories. But for these two, Jesus wanted to take a little bit slower. He sort of wanted to, to walk them through it. And then as we go, we'll look at it. He starts to, it gives Jesus then a chance to slowly build from Scripture the story of how everything ties together. And shows them the picture through Scripture and then Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection, how this whole picture comes together. And it's going to be something that they're going to be able to carry with them for the rest of their life. So as Jesus comes in, and talks with them, notice that he doesn't come right out and just tell them everything. Jesus comes in and he listens to them. And, and he listens to you and me too. I think that's, a, that's one of the things we want to grab from this is sometimes Jesus want, just wants us to, to tell us, tell us to tell him our story. Just to, to share what's going on in our lives what we're thinking about it, how we're dealing with it. And, and he's ready to sit there and listen to us talk to him. He really is. Um, if you haven't sat down and talked with Jesus in a while, I uh, invite you to sit down and do that. But he does it with two questions. And the first question is is the greatest question. We talked about it last week, I know, but I love it. It's it, in this event that has just happened with the, the death and now the open tomb. He comes up to me and says, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? Basically, he's saying, what you talking about? And just, it's sort of a surface question, isn't it? If you come up to somebody and say, hey, what are you talking about? It, it just allows them to tell you, hey, this is the thing that's going on in the world right now. This is, this is the thing that's happening. And we got to love the disciples' response. It's, it, and they stood still looking sad. They had that pause. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? He said, Are you the only one that doesn't know the things? It's like this whole event has just poured out. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody's paying attention to it. And Jesus slows them down just a little bit more. And a simple question, two words. You said the things? Jesus says, what things? In other words, take me deeper. Okay, th that's the event. And what he does is he gives those disciples a chance to go a little bit deeper. Not only the event, but we're going to hear that they then get to give their take on it. And listen to the things that, that when they had said the things, as Jesus says what things, listen to how much further the disciples take it after this. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only one? And Jesus says what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, 
mighty in deed and word before God and all people. It, it gives them a chance to confess how who Jesus was and, and what they thought Jesus was and, and what he was going to do. And then the event that took place and how the chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. I mean, here's here's the thing that throws everything upside down for them. This Jesus who we're following, he's now dead. This is the thing that's on our heart right now. But we had hoped. And, and there's that beautiful little flicker of light in there that they get a chance to confess. We had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Now, as I was reading, I think that Jesus even had sort of a, a, a third question in there. And it's not written in there, but because the very thing, next thing they say is yes. It's almost like it, it, they're talking about Jesus and the hope they had with him. And it's almost like Jesus was listening and said, really? And it was, yes. <laughs> you know, it's, Cleopas says, yes, we, we had hope. And it almost gets him to go further. And he says this, he says, yes. And besides all this, it is now the third day. And now the rest of the story gets to come out. It is now the third day since these things happened. And moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. But when they did not find his body, they came back saying that, uh, that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him, they did not see. They get a chance to tell their story and, and just to unload everything that they've been carrying in their heart. And, and, and Jesus gets us all out of them by these two little questions. What are you talking about? And tell me more, what things? And they do. And they open up and, and they pour out to him how, how they had hoped, you know, and you can tell that they knew from the scriptures that, that there was going to be one that was going to redeem Israel. And, and now Jesus was the one and, and he's been crucified. And now there's this story and, and this is where we've met. This is where Jesus comes together with them in the middle of their confusion. And so now he gets to take them and, and walk them a little further. And here's where it comes, and I'm going to call it a, a gentle rebuke. Gentle because that's my Jesus. And yet, the other day, somebody sent me a text, and it's the first time I saw it. The text came in, and it said underneath it said "gentle effects." And the text came in, and it was sort of it sort of softly opened up, and I could read the words. It was it was gentle effects, and. Uh, I think to, it says, oh, that's interesting. And then he sent me one with heart effects and it came out like this. It was like, boom. And then, you know, it went back and it, and it did. It sort of had that harsh feel to it. And I think that as Jesus talked to these two disciples, I, I just have a sense that it was, it, it, they sound, they might sound like harsh words, but I think they were spoken with a gentle voice. Hear what he has to say to them. Verse 25, and he says to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. It's almost like he sees right into what they're wrestling with. And it's almost like he's reflecting back to them. He says, you know from the scriptures that this is promised. And he just sort of takes them back and, and, and sort of reminds them that they're saying a foolish thing. And how slow of heart how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And he comes to them, and, and, and I love that phrase, slow of heart to believe. You know, there's times when Jesus, I think, spoke just a little bit more harshly to people. He talked about hardened hearts. And hardened hearts are ones that, that won't believe the things that God does. Hardened hearts are the ones that have sort of set up like concrete and, and there's no breaking and there's no getting through. But he comes to these two disciples and he doesn't say that they have hardened hearts, that they're slow of heart. And I got to be honest, there's many times Jesus has, has probably spoken those words to me 
Oh foolish one, how slow of heart to believe. You know these things. You know these things. And how many times maybe you felt the same way. You know, I know these things, but I'm in this situation right now. And where is God in all this? And you can almost hear Jesus say to you, Oh foolish one, oh slow of heart to believe. And he says it in such a gentle, loving way that you know he wants to take you from where you're at and take you somewhere forward. And Jesus does. And as Jesus does, he, he meets them right where they're at, too. Remember back that they said that, that we had hoped that he was the one that would redeem Israel. In, in that one phrase, they're talking that we, they're, they're, they're connecting themselves with the body of Israel. They know the promises of the scripture. So, so they're anchored in what God has been saying for all these years and the promises of the Messiah. And then they go on and they get to tell he, that Jesus, they're talking about Jesus. He was the one. And so they're confessing their, their faith that they had hoped in him. And so that's where Jesus meets them. And I think that's why it says, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he begins to explain to them the things concerning himself, although they don't know it's him yet. He begins to he begins to come to them, and it's and I thought about it, and it's almost like when I was a little kid, um, and I think they still have them because I did one with my grandkids not too long ago. It's uh, the connect the dots. You know, you you turn to a page, and it's got these numbered dots all over, and sometimes you you have no idea what these dots mean, but you start at one, and you draw a line from one to two, and then two to three, and three to four, and slowly these lines start to come together, and they start to take shape, and you start, and at a certain point, you're going, oh, I know what this picture is. It's almost what Jesus was doing for the disciples. He, he, he met them right where they're at. He talked about the things that they knew and they held on to. And, and they, they knew the scriptures. They see how what Jesus done. And so from the scriptures, the Old Testament, all the way back through the Old Testament, he starts connecting the dots for them. Remember Moses, the Redeemer? Joshua and, and Joseph and Isaiah, what he said concerning the one to come and, and the Psalms and, and Psalm 22, how it paints a picture. And you could just imagine the different places that Jesus went. And you could almost, you could almost see these slow of heart guys just getting kindled inside. To see, and, 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 and oh wait, these are scriptures. You know, this is what Jesus did. And, and, and now Jesus is, is putting it all together for us. And that picture is coming clear. And it's setting our hearts on fire. It's a beautiful picture because you can be slow of heart. And sometimes when I go walking in South Park, you know, I look at some of those people that, those young people, you, you know how they can just bounce along and just move real fast and they get quickly to their destination. And for some people, oh man, boom, it's there, it's right there. But sometimes for you and I, when we get a little bit slow of heart, you know, if we keep walking, God will walk us to that destination. He'll show us. He'll take us to that place. And we get to see that Jesus takes these disciples there. And I love what happens with them. Because after he comes to them and disguises who he is, there's going to come a point where he reveals who he is. I want you to hear the words and as we said, beginning with all the prophets and Moses and all the prophets, he reveals from the scriptures these things concern himself. And so they drew near to the village. Now, they left Jerusalem. And remember, they said the disciples who were with us. So they had been in Jerusalem that morning. This is a seven mile walk. And now they're starting to draw to Emmaus and Jesus has been walking and they've been talking and his picture's been unfolding and something's been happening inside them. And he acted as if he was going farther, but they urged him strongly. I can imagine they were urging him strongly, saying, stay with us, for it is toward evening. I think they wanted to hear more, don't you? For it was, it was uh, toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Remember the Last Supper, the broken bread. 
and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and the, the mask came off. They saw him for who he was. Can you imagine that moment? I mean, just, oh, here I am. Here I am in the presence of Jesus. And he vanished from their sight. Well, that was quick. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Isn't that a beautiful picture. And that's why I invite you, if you happen in a while, and maybe in the middle of what's going on in your life right now, Jesus asked you a question, hey, what's going on? What, what are the things that you're talking about? What are the things that are in your conversation? And, and what he's asking you is, he's saying, tell me that. Maybe today you just, you just go for a walk, just, just you and Jesus together. And just, just tell him, you know, yeah, yeah, these are the things that are going on. And, and, and when he asks you what things, he's really asking you, what's in your heart? What do you think about it? What do you feel? Where, where, where is your walk with me in all this? And it's amazing when you tell him how he'll speak back to you. And when he speaks back, my goodness, how are our, our hearts burn within us. So today I ask you to spend a little time with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, but spend time with the one they were walking with. Spend time with some Jesus. Tell him, in it? Just as he listens to you, open your heart and your ears to listen to him. He usually has something good to say. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you. We give you thanks for your blessing for us. Lord, like those disciples, there are days when we feel like maybe you've left us, abandoned us, things are confused. It's, we, sometimes we just get hit those days in life and Lord, for when we're slow of heart, we confess. We then thank you for walking with us, even when we think you're not there. Lord, we pray a blessing on our church, on the community that we live in, on our nation. Lord, the entire world, Lord, we pray that, that, that you would reveal yourself to many souls, to many people. And, and if you want to use us to help that happen, Lord, we, we want to be there to, to walk with you in that. Lord, where there is brokenness, we ask that you would, that you would restore and bring healing for the, for the first responders, the health care workers, all the people who are out on the front lines right now. Lord, we pray that you'd be with them. We know that, that they're waging a heavy battle in this season. And we pray your hedge of protection to, to wrap around them. And Lord, we do. We pray for hearts set on fire, not only for the world, but within us too. We pray that as we come to you with, with our hearts and, and we lay ourselves before you, our story, our concerns, our confusion, that as we listen to you, that your spirit would set us on fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So. We've just taken a walk with two disciples and with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And, and the real question is, is, is what do we take from that, that walk, that journey with them? And the first thing is this, and I really mean it, and that is to talk with God, to share with him what's on your heart. And the more open and the more honest that we are, the more permission we give him to go deep within our heart. And the second is this, then take time to listen. Maybe there's a passage from scripture that's on your heart, um, but pray about it and ask God to speak to you, to reveal to you what he wants to. And, and this is where we let him set the agenda for what he wants to share with us. But the third thing, and maybe most importantly, is this, that wherever you are at, Jesus meets you where you're at. Just like with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he met them where they're at. That's where he meets us. And so whether we're dealing with anger, confusion, doubt, maybe we're slow of heart. Wherever it is, 
That's where Jesus is willing to meet us. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Victory.